Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I have a sweet slimline card featuring a beautiful new die set by Spellbinders letterbox. Letterboxes are fairly standard in the rural areas where I live. I've seen a few that are literally works of art and they have inspired this card. I'm using a die from Colorblock Landscape to create some foreground. This die creates some interlocking pieces that are paper pieced together. I've done this out of a couple of soft greys, ivory and lavender. I hold everything together with a little bit of scotch tape. An ink blended sky is being created on some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I'm using very soft colors, spun sugar, shaded lilac and tumble glass. Both the panel and the foreground are popped into the spatter box. White gouache that has been slightly watered down applied with a fan brush creates a fine spatter. When I have a lot of die cutting to do and I'm working with smaller dies, I like to sit comfortably at my workstation using a Sizzix Sidekick. The suction feature on this die cutter keeps it stable on a glass mat. I have lots of different elements, so I'm going to start off by die cutting just the letter box, putting it together, and then I'll go on to the other pieces. The letter box has been die cut from black cardstock, the post out of white, and then I'm adding in some pretty little gold accents. To assemble it, the letter box is going to be sitting on a little frame piece that attaches to the post. Liquid adhesive is applied just above the score line where it will be positioned. Mail is ready to be picked up by the postal worker, so the little flag is positioned so that it is standing up. After the molding detail is adhered to the top of the post, the letter box is attached. The bottom of the letterbox door has a score line. This is folded under. It's going to be adhered underneath the end of the letterbox. I'm going to prop the door open so that it has some dimension, but you actually could use this cute element to create an interactive door that opens and closes. The letterbox is finished up with a fancy gold handle on the door. The panel has been trimmed down to three and a half by eight and a half inches. Paper piece landscaped is adhered to the bottom and then I take it to my paper cutter to trim off the excess. To give the letterbox a little bit of dimension, a foam die cut of the post was adhered to it. To adhere the letterbox to the card front, liquid adhesive is used on the foam backing on the post and then little foam squares are added to the letterbox. The die cut sentiment comes from Stitched Joy. I had some leftover foiled paper using plaid tidings background and I just had to use it so I die cut both that and foam stacked it and then adhered the sentiment to the top of the cart. And then I start the die cutting again. I've pulled some elements from a few die sets. The flowers that I'm shaping are from a beautiful set called Jasmine. The petals are simply shaped by using a ball tool on a molding mat and then applying it in a circular motion to the end of each of the petals. The flower is created by offsetting one of the die cuts onto the other. The stamens were die cut from gold. The die cut is wrapped around the end of a pair of tweezers and then a dot of glue holds it together. The completed flower is depressed with the ball tool and then the stamens attach to the center. The last of the elements are from a couple of die sets from the Parcel and Post collection, mailbox and Christmas decorations. Like the background, both the mailbox and the greenery were spattered with watered down white gouache. The little paper berries were added on to the berry branch. This branch and the evergreen boughs are adhered to the bottom of the letterbox post. 
The panel was matted on black cardstock and adhered to a card base measuring eight and three quarters by three and three quarter inches. The letterbox doors opened up and a couple of small foam squares are placed right at the base to keep it propped open. All of the greenery is from Christmas decorations, but I had to include that little letter from the mailbox die set. The pink letter is adhered with glue in the other two with foam squares. And I think that these letters spilling out of the letter box are the perfect final touch. Bottom of the door has four rivet die cuts, which I did not remove. Instead, I am going to accent each of them with some gold Nouveau drops. If the Nouveau drops are applied with the die cut removed, they will dimple. I add in quite a number of the pink opalescent sequins and top them up with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew, giving them a jewel-like appearance. And for good measure, I also add the drops to the berries on the branch. Now the flowers really should have been adhered before I got busy with the Nouveau Drops, but I carefully added those in last. And that completes this slimline Christmas card featuring Spellbinder's letterbox. You just can't go wrong with cards made from die cuts. They are easy to put together and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and it takes them to the next level. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this card. And as always, I appreciate your visit.